Praise the Lord, everyone. Brother Roop here. I'm going to talk about um, a piece of scripture that's uh, taken out of context and used in a, a wrong way. And it's probably, probably the most uh, scripture that's taken out of context in the whole Bible. And uh, then you might be saying, well, Brother Roop, what do you know about biblical hermeneutics? Well, I wrote the book on it. That's why. So I did actually, literally, write the book on it. So uh, it's available on Amazon for uh, nine bucks if you want. It, so, but anyway. So there's lots of scripture verses throughout the Bible that's taken out of context, and most ministers take it out of context either because they don't do enough study in the Bible or they do it on purpose. And they sometimes have motivation for doing that. Um, one motivation is uh, to, to teach about tithing in a more clear way. But the problem is you're, you're misinterpreting Scripture on purpose, and that's never good. And God will judge you for that. And if you can't talk about a subject, uh, let me say this kinder. Uh, <laughs> if you can't talk about a subject in the Bible without taking verses out of, out of its context, well, then you probably shouldn't be talking about it. So, just saying. Um, and the verse I'm talking about is uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. That's Luke chapter 6, verse 38. I'll go ahead and read it to you. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. There's a semicolon there. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom, for the same measure that ye mit withal, it shall be measured unto you again. Now, people use this to convince their congregations they ought to tithe to the church. Now, I'm a big believer in tithing. Ten uh, percent is throughout the whole Bible. Now, it's ten percent to different people, different organizations, and different this and this and that. And that, but it's constantly ten percent. It's throughout the whole Bible. That can't be ignored. So if I was to say, if you were to ask me how much you would give to the kingdom of God, I would say 10%. Uh, that's how much I give. In fact, I give more. I give 10% and then I, got, I give alms on top of that. Um, I just gave $300 to buy Bibles in Pakistan. Uh, that's uh, my alms on top of my 10%. So I'm a big believer in 10% as a general rule. Uh, is your salvation tied into that? No. No. You won't lose your salvation because you don't give enough money to the church. Some may, some may have you believe that. But, and usually the money, the people receiving the money uh, have you believe that. But uh, no, Acts 2.38, that's salvation issues. Those three things are salvation issues. Repentance, water baptism, and... Uh, receiving to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, outside of those three things, it's it's not salvation issues. And those are just things to be obedient. And yeah, you can be saved and not as obedient as other Christians who are saved and very obedient. So, and God rewards those who are o obedient. So, but um, yeah, it's a, well, it's a good verse for collecting money, right? It's a great verse. Give, and it should be given to you. you know, it it uh, pumps up people's greed. Oh, God will give to me more than I give to him. But then they're thinking of all the things they can buy at the store or, you know, the Cadillac or, or something ridiculous. Um, and that's what that's the whole point is to pump up somebody's greed. You know, if you're pumping up somebody's greed, uh, well, that's, that's wrong. So, 
given and it shall be given unto you. So what is the Apostle Luke talking about here then? He's not talking about giving to the church. What is he talking about? Well, if you read chapter 6 in its entirety, oh, he's talking about Well, if, you, if you start halfway through chapter halfway through chapter six, it talks about sins, sins, saints and sinners. Jesus is uh, teaching his disciples about saints and sinners. Um, who are they? And this is uh, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and he's he's teaching these people, his disciples, from the ground up. Um, even though a lot of this is from the Torah, uh, this is all new stuff to these people, and, uh, which is sad because <laughs> they, they, they didn't get the spirit of the Torah. So Jesus is talking to his disciples about saints and sinners and who they are and what they do. Uh, who's a saint? What do they do? Who's our sin who are sinners and what they do? And then, then Jesus talks about love for enemies which um, goes against what the Jews back then were thinking. They were thinking eye for an eye. And Jesus says, no, don't give them an eye for an eye. Forgive. And so he's, Jesus goes into forgiveness. And so about a dozen verses before the scripture verse in, in, in Luke 6.38, Jesus is talking about forgiveness, forgiveness. That's what he's talking about. That's the, that's the context of what Jesus is talking about. Nowhere in the first whole first half of the book of Luke is money talking about. Nowhere. Money is not discussed anywhere near this verse or this chapter for, for, for crying out loud. Here in Luke chapter 6, the, the last part of it, he's talking about forgiveness. And then after Luke 38, going down to verse 46, he, he, he talks about the two house builders. And then the, a tree and its fruit, a tree and its fruit. So Jesus is saying forgiveness is a fruit of the tree. Uh, if you're a good Christian, you'll produce fruit. You'll be a tree that produces good fruit. And one of the fruits of a good tree would be forgiveness for others. You know, forgiveness for your neighbors. Love thy neighbors, Jesus told the Pharisee. Or the rich, rich young ruler. He said, love your enemies. The rich young ruler says, uh, well, who's my neighbor? Jesus said, everybody. Everybody's your neighbor. Forgive everybody of everything. So give and it shall be given unto you. There's a semicolon there in the King James. And hopefully you're just reading the King James because that's the still the authorized Bible of the King James. There's a semicolon there. What does that mean? You know, a semicolon is a pause between two main clauses. That's what it is. Um, then it, it's more pronounced than the, it's more pronounced than a regular comma. It's a bigger pause, a bigger break. It's usually usually a statement, and then after the semicolon is uh, an explanation of the statement. That's usually, usually what a semicolon is all about. So, give and it shall be given unto you. Semicolon. So the rest of it is going to explain that statement. You follow me? Good measure. What's good measure? Well, first, give what? Give and it shall be given unto you. Give what? Give forgiveness. That's what Jesus is talking about. That's the context of his discussion is forgiveness. So give. 
give forgiveness. Give money to the church? No. no. Jesus isn't talking about giving money to the church. <laughs> no. He's not talking about giving money anywhere around uh, first part of Luke. No. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Give. Give forgiveness to your neighbors. If you give, forgive neighbor, forgive, if you, <laughs> if you forgive your neighbors, say one measure, God in return will forgive you of your trespasses seven times. So give forgiveness and it shall be given unto you forgiveness from God. How much? Good measure. Forgiveness will be given to you in good measure. Forgiveness will be given to you, pressed down. Forgiveness for you will be shaken together. Forgiveness for you will be running over if you forgive others. Shall men give unto your bosom? Men around you will forgive you of your trespasses. And God will forgive you of your trespasses against him. For the same measure that she bent out with her, uh, it shall be measured unto you. So if you forgive your neighbors around you, they, in return, will forgive you of your trespasses. And God will forgive you too. How much will God forgive you? Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, <laughs> running over. It's not talking about money. If a preacher uses this for money, he's either a crooked preacher or he's ignorant. Crooked or ignorant, one of the two. An honest preacher will use this for what it's intended, forgiveness. Certainly a subject that needs to be preached about today is forgiveness. So, Brother Roop, what does the uh, rest of the Bible have to say about that? Is it... Well, let's look at uh, Psalm 79. 79, 12. 79, 12. I'll read it to you. Psalm 79, 12 says, And render unto our neighbors sevenfold, into their bosom, their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. That's, this is uh, the psalmist talking about talking to God, to the Lord. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold unto the bosom of their reproach. So when they sin against them and they forgive, give back to them sevenfold. So what does uh, Proverbs 19.12 say? Proverbs 19.12. It says, The king's wrath is as a roaring lion, but his favor is a dew upon the grass. So, God will give you favor as the dew upon the grass. Now, if you're not an outdoorsman, you probably don't know what that means. So, but the God, God's ready to give you favor. He's ready to forgive you your sins. The key is to forgive your neighbors and forgive yourself. That's important too. Forgive yourself. You know, forgiving your neighbors is one thing, but how about forgiving yourself? So, why don't we go back to the Gospels? How, how about that? Matthew chapter 7, verses 6 through 8. Matthew chapter 7, verses 6 through 8. Give. There it is. Give. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before the swine, 
lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and it shall and you shall find it. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So what's the key to knocking and have the doors open? Forgiveness. Give. Give what? Forgiveness. Ask. Ask what? Ask for forgiveness. Look, we should, should, we should always be asking for forgiveness. I mean, because we're human. We make mistakes. We make mistakes. So we should always be asking for forgiveness. I'm constantly asking for forgiveness. As should you. Because when you ask for forgiveness, God gives it to you. When you ask your neighbor for forgiveness, he even gives it to you. And uh, God gives it to you. What about uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 24? Four, I lost my bookmark. <laughs> Four. Four twenty-four. It says, And he shall unto them take heed what ye shall hear, with what measure ye meet. Sound familiar? It shall be measured unto you, and unto you that hear shall more be given, shall more be forgiven. And again, that's talking about forgiveness. It's talking about letting your light shine before men. And how do you do that? By being forgiven, by forgiving everybody. Remember, Jesus was talking about saints and sinners back in Luke. How do you recognize saints? We're always forgiving. We're always forgiving of you. They don't hold grudges. They don't remember past sins. We're always forgiving. That's how you tell, and that's how you tell sinners is they don't forgive. <laughs> so, so, yeah, they don't forgive. They carry grudges. Sinners do. How about James chapter two, verse thirteen? Look at James chapter two, verse thirteen. Let's look at that. For ye shall have judgment without mercy that hath shown no mercy, semicolon, and mercy rejoices against judgment. Mercy rejoices against judgment. So, forgive. Don't lay judgment on others. Forgive them. That's what James is saying. Judgment's for God. We shouldn't be judging. Now, the Bible does say we can judge using the Word of God. But you got to be careful. You have to use the Word of God. You can't judge from your own spirit or from yourself. You have to judge from the Word of God, which is the same as God himself. In fact, God placed his Word above all things, even himself. So, Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you. It's not talking about money. That's how it's perverted. It's talking about forgiveness, forgiveness for your neighbors, forgiveness for yourself. That's what it is. And we should do that. We should do that. You know... I don't know who, who, who's listening to this video. I don't know who. Might be a friend of mine. Might be a, a, a stranger. I don't know. But your destiny, whoever you are, your destiny is too great 
to let everyone keep you from moving forward. So choose now to forgive. Choose now to forgive. Because if you if you begin to release the past, just let it go, release the past. Just let it all go. The hurts, the pains. And I don't know what hurt you in the past. I don't know what your pains are in the past. But God does. God can forgive you if you can forgive others. But if you can begin to release the past or the pains and the hurts, then you'll experience, you'll experience the joy and the freedom that God intends for you. Freedom from hurts of the past. Freedom from the pain of the past. How do you do that? Luke chapter 6, verse 48. Give forgiveness to your neighbors, to yourself, to God. Give forgiveness, and it shall be given unto you. And when your neighbors and God forgives you, forgives you, and you forgive your neighbors, then you have joy and freedom that God intends for you in this world. God bless you. I love you. I want you to be free. I want you to be filled with joy. So whoever you have not forgiven, get down on your knees and talk to God about it. You know, the first step in forgiveness in the plan of salvation, Acts 2.38, is to repent. And part of repentance is uh, not only just saying sorry and living another way, but... Uh, uh, it's also forgiving. Repentance is forgiving. Forgiving of other people. That's part of it. Forgiving and repenting is kind of the two terms that means the same thing, really. So, talk to God about it. If you, if you, can't, if you can't do it on your own, ask God to help you. He'll help you. Jesus will help you. He'll give you the strength. They'll give you the assistance to forgive others. And that's the key to happiness. And Jesus knew that. That's why he's teaching it in chapter 6 of Luke. That's why he's teaching it. That's one of the first things he taught was forgiveness. Because Jesus knew. He knows. That our happiness depends on our forgiveness of others. So God bless you. I love you. And uh, see you next video. God bless you.